This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off for Kicksville. Kicksville. <laughs> The Trippers, the Grasshoppers, the Hip Ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. You're listening to The Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. Rachel Katsola standing by, caller 9844-990. We'll play profile this coming up in minutes. And we have your headlines on the way one hour from now. First, quick check into Mike Hawk for some of the stories and headlines he is not working on. All right, police in Washington, D.C. are looking for someone who broke into a Chipotle and ate a tray of barbacoa. <laughs> hey, man, if you have not had barbacoa, just know the barbacoa is delicious, and that is a fine choice for a criminal. I, I completely agree. Yeah, I mean, look, if you're going to break into a Chipotle, if you're not going to steal money, then eat the barbacoa. I'm not encouraging you to do it, but if you're going to do it, that would be the thing to eat. Barbacoa is freaking delicious. I mean, was it after hours? I'm a, you know what? I don't know because there's a trick. Well, maybe. Because you prep a lot of stuff. You probably put it on a sheet pan and stick that in a walk-in for the next day, right? Yeah. So you I can go in there, that. right? And, that, and that's going to be your biggest supply. All right. Heat it up real quick. and then uh, Or who knows? Eat it cold. To be honest, of all the meats at Chipotle, I don't think he could go wrong. Now, barbacoa is delicious, but I don't think he could have gone wrong with whatever he chose there. What, what, do you would you have, what would you have picked? Man, I to be honest, my method is I go in there and I look at which tray is full and I grab it. No, we're stealing stuff. We have broken oh, in, Mike. I'm going for the barbacoa. I'm going steak, brother. Okay. All right. Not a bad choice. And then again, that steak has a lot of spice on it, and for some reason it like, burns my gums, but it's fantastic. I'm usually a chicken guy, but sometimes I go steak. Mm-hmm. I think, but if we're breaking in there, we're in Chipotle. Like I know you order chicken, but like, hey, let's live a little, man. Dude, Crazy. if I break into a Chipotle, I'm stealing one thing. Guacamole. <laughs> Crazy question. You guys ever tried the sofritas? No, they're fantastic. What's in it? What's on them? It's it's no no no. The Sofritas is a is another meat option. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I'm not surprised that you don't know what it is. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Wow. Do you know what animal it's from? Totally not. Yeah, it's not from any animal at all. Actually, Trail. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> then it's not that's, a meat that's option. That's why I'm not surprised that you do not know what okay, it is. Okay, that explains everything. Then no, I haven't tried that. <laughs> it's actually really, really good. Maybe it is, but it's, it's one not of my meat favorite options, man. If it doesn't come from an animal. All right. Well, <laughs> it's it's one of your base options. How about that? It's like a pork vegetable. It's just they don't exist. <laughs> a pork vegetable. Yes, this lettuce comes from a pig. Okay, well, it's not lettuce. From BBC News, it says, "Quote: Is it true only 10 percent of Americans have passports?" I don't know. If they ask, I guess it probably is. Yeah. I'd tell you if I was working on it. <clears throat> so that's what, about 3.74 million people? Is that it? I think that's probably right. Yeah, there's what, about 320 million people in the States? So, so yeah, yeah, 10%. It'd be three, 3 million people. Huh. Huh. Wait, is that right? Yeah. I mean, nobody in my family, like, no, my immediate family, no, nobody has okay. one except yeah. my brother because he took a school trip and had to get one. I got one. To okay. London. Yeah, I got one. I got one. You have one, Ted? No. Huh? We need to get your passport. Yeah, I, I, I know. My son just got a passport, right? So, <laughs> they get, well, no, no, no. They get them like every five years when when they're little kids. So, mm-hmm. the five years, you know, his appearance has changed dramatically, and I didn't realize this. I was explaining it to Miles, and not that I want to ever put his passport picture up for public view, but he's got his fro right, but he's got light big curl fro. So his hair, it was just a massive spherical. Fills up probably the entire picture frame. <laughs> the top half of the frame is all black with his hair. It looks like the, the drummer from Boston on the back of the first album. Okay, <laughs> don't look but back. He's wearing this. Uh, he's wearing a white button up shirt, and only like the top button maybe was unbuttoned. But the way the picture's taken, it looks like his shirt is open. So when I saw his passport, <laughs> I swear to God, he looks like a black Bee Gees. It looks like it is from the seventies, and I'm like, oh my god, man. <laughs> He's about to lay down some crazy funk. Oh, dude. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he should call you mama and wear, you know, have goldfish in the heels of his boots. Oh, no. No, it's, it's great. <laughs> He'll hate it when he gets older, but it. I laugh my ass off when I saw him. It's like, God damn, Black BG. <laughs> Look at you, staying alive. According to a new report, America's credit card debt hit an all-time high of more than $1 trillion in November. They are loving that. And after the holidays, it might be even higher. The previous record was set during the financial crisis in 2008. Yay! I mean, doesn't that all mean we're heading for another crash? Uh, sort of. I mean, the thing about the debt is it's cumulative, you know? I mean, mm-hmm. 
they know you're never going to pay it all. That's part of the thing. If you can make your payment, they're happy. They don't want you to pay it all because if you pay it all, then I get money from right. it, right? So right. the interest is huge. You pay your minimum payment if you're in that situation, and your minimum payment is all interest. So the yep. bank, they're not worried about it. But any time the market goes up, it is eventually going to crash. Right. Sure. I mean, it's, it's got to come. What goes up must come down, and it'll just keep repeating. And it just depends on how big of the crash it's going to be. That's right. The, That's the difference. There's so many factors in that. I'm not even sure that they can even speculate if it's going to just be unbelievable or minimal or going to be minimal first and then just fall off a cliff or whatever the deal is. But it yeah. can't stay this way forever. Yeah. I got a feeling that the debt's on its way down. You think? Yeah. Just things are trending upward. Well, based People on history. money right now. Yeah. yeah, people are making money, but, you know, like, put it this way. Like, a lot of the, the debt that we have in this country is bought by the Chinese. This has been their business model for years. Mm-hmm. They're kind of irritated right now, and they're kind of renegotiating how they do that. That would prove very problematic. Most people don't get all of that, but it's there's a whole ecosystem that makes things work. And when one big superpower decides to F with it, man, it, it sends ripples everywhere. And there's a massive difference between companies making money and people, and making, people making money. And people making money, right. Yeah. According to new research, singing, especially in groups, can help women who are suffering from postpartum depression. Yeah. I've never felt bad when I sing. Right. Well, it depends what you sing. Right. Say, if they're what singing they Tears sing? of a Clown, I sure. bet you that's not a pick-me-up. <laughs> it's a good song. But it's not happy. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> that's because you don't like, like clowns. Well, I just like that song. I like Smokey. Break on through the other side by the doors. <laughs> you sing the Ave Maria, I'd start crying. Oh, yeah. Songs to not sing, then, to help mm-hmm. women with postpartum depression. For me, it's it's uh, Amazing Grace on the Bagpipes, man. Gets me every time. Of course, really? you're not singing that one, but yeah. Rips your soul out. Wow, that's I, uh, I love the bagpipes, man. No, See, that, that sounds I, like something you love. Oh, it rips you are the soul only right person out. who loves the bagpipes. Really? Oh. People in Scotland hate the bagpipes. Mike, I'm with you. I like a good Thank bagpipe. Thank you. Really? Yeah. God's gift to the musical world right there, man. Oh, wow. My buddy, his dad was a fireman for years. When he passed away, we were at the funeral, and over this bluff just came this one bagpiper oh. playing it. While it was chilling, honestly, it was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. So, so get this. I take a trip to Scotland years ago, right? And I go to this thing. They call it a military tattoo. It's basically this huge uh, 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 national band festival. Every country is bringing bands in here and putting on a show. And the thing starts out with literally 150 bagpipes storming out of Edinburgh Castle, all blaring their drones and playing the same song. And it is gorgeous. It brought a tear to my eye. It was fantastic. Plus, sometimes bagpipes, I just associate with pub crawls around St. Patrick's Day. Oh, yeah. Well, sure, man. I mean, yeah. in the States, I think we look at bagpipes like, look, either something sad happened to a or police officer happy, yeah. or it's St. Patty's Day. Yeah. Probably should have given you this one for tomorrow. Their thrill. A new study found narcissists are more likely to follow other narcissists on Instagram. You don't say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't say. They also say. found out where narcissists sit on planes. Where? Where do you think? <laughs> no, no. Oh, I saw this. Yeah, it's uh, it's in coach. It's a specific seat that you would pick if in, you're in just a general exit row. The exit or, uh, the, uh, yeah, the... They don't bring that up. I'm sure that was figured in, but that was not the one they pointed out. Which one? The right window seat. Correct. Right window. Why? Psycho. Something about the window seat makes you like you're just worried about yourself and you want to have your own space and this and that. And then if you're an aisle person, you want to interact with people. You don't and have talk a problem a getting more. up. But why specifically you know, like, the right seat? I don't know, because but that's how they broke it down. Probably because that's look, most people's dominant hand. Correct. Huh. That, I mean, that's my guess. The seating chart, that's where most people are going to go. Okay. okay. A homeowners association in Northern California is forcing people to keep their garage doors open eight hours a day, all because one person got caught renting their garage out as a bedroom. What happens when some one house gets their whole home cleaned out by a robber? Thank you. And that's what everyone there is saying. Yeah. Put the garage door down. Exactly. Uh, some people have all the luck. A guy in Massachusetts recently hit the lottery for a million dollars less than five months after his wife won a million dollars from P- Publishers Clearinghouse. Damn. And their last name is Goodwin. Mm, good win. <laughs> well, that far, this smells pretty. A man in New York was out on parole, uh, robbed a subway, but it wasn't hard for police to track him down. Why is that? I'll tell you all about it one hour from now. Thank you, Mike Hawk. Headlines are coming up one hour from now, but first, the game is on. Uh... The Men's Room presents Profile This. Hey, Steve, throw a hill, can you please, tell everyone, how Profile This is played? I sure can, Miles. It's a simple game where we share with you a real-life news story, something that happened right here on planet Earth. Earth. And as you listen to the story, based on the stereotypes you believe to be true of people and the decisions that people make, we'll ask you what it is you think makes the story a story. Hello, Randy. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 All right, Randy, you understand how this here game is played? Yes, sir. Fantastic. Here is your story. A man suspected of stealing from a bank 
was arrested by the Cottonwood Police Department during what he thought was an interview for a police dispatcher job. The 32-year-old, he'd been sought since October of 2016 when Bank of America filed a theft report. Now, he ended up moving to Phoenix, and he kept missing appointments with investigators, refusing to answer their phone calls, etc. A warrant for his arrest was issued by the whatever county there, but he avoided contact with law enforcement officials for a whole nother year. They're looking for this guy. They can't find him anywhere. But then, this past December, this genius applies for a job opening as a dispatcher with the Cottonwood Police Department, in spite of knowing that the cops are looking for him. So during a background check, which, believe it or not, cops do if you're going to apply there, well, that's when his warrant came to light, so the officer scheduled a quote-unquote interview at the police station. Naturally, when he arrived for the interview, police officers placed him under arrest in connection with the bank robbery. The guy robbed a bank, knew the police were looking for him, and still applied for a job as a police dispatcher. My question is, do you believe that this savvy genius is black, white, Mexi, or Asian? I'm going to have to go white on that one, but what do you guys think? I would tend to agree with you. If you're going to disappear in Arizona, you're either going to be white or Mexican. And if your knowledge is is that you're going to go someplace that you believe is a safe haven, I can only imagine if you're white, do you believe that Arizona could be a safe haven? But I can't believe that anyone that knows the cops are because the cops weren't being subtle. They well, made it clear but that's back that to being they're looking for and going up to an officer. But then you apply for a job as a police right. dispatcher. I think that's the worst job you could take. I think you're right. I think the guy's white, but I don't know. I only knew one dispatcher. She was white. I don't think I've ever known a police dispatcher. Ah, yeah. Strange breed, because they're almost working for the cops, but they're not quite. Right. They can so also so tell like, you... Uh, they more get the gossip without necessarily that's what I was say, They can also tell yeah. you all the action in your neighborhood. Yeah. You know? But I I don't know that this says anybody. I mean, that just seems incredibly but stupid. But again, right. to walk into a police station, feel comfortable filling out paperwork, writing your name down, giving your phone number, being in proximity with officers with no care in the world, even though you're wanted, it just seems to be something that a white person would do. Yeah, I'm going to stick white. Final answer. Final answer. All right, Randy, we'll find out if he was black, white, Mexi, or Asian next. Was a tease. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. We return to the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. Well, pal, this takes us to Arizona and a wanted man. A wanted man who needed a job. So what's he do? He goes into the police station and applies to be a police dispatcher. They run a background check on him and they throw his ass in jail. Was he black, white, Mexi, or Asian? And, of course, in the end, you picked white. Seemed like a white thing to do. No, oh. no. You picked a Mexico. Or you picked a Mexico. Oh. You picked a miles. You said, "Look, <laughs> if you're going to disappear in Arizona, you're going to be white or Mexi." Mexi yes, yes, indeed. Yes, that is true. I just called you Mexico. <laughs> well, it used to be Texas. Yeah, I guess it was. Time ago. Back in the old time. Oh, oh, come on. <laughs> well, it used to be Mexico. But God, that was hundreds of years ago. Sure, yeah, but I mean, historic, Ted. Right, exactly. Yes, we don't. We don't. No revisionist history on this show. <laughs> Now for all the TV news all the time, and it's time for TV Time with Ted. And now, because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box, the Men's Room presents TV Time with Ted. <laughs> oh, man. Remind me in the next commercial break, thrilled to tell you a story from yesterday. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Why can't you tell us now? <laughs> Because I'm going to look like a racist. No, but you are racist. Well, maybe We're you all are racist. a racist. Yeah, what well, would be the joke? Okay. I just said Mexico. I mean, like, there's, there's, plenty of, there's plenty of people I hate for no reason. Go ahead. All right. So, sometimes in our building, there's a guy that comes in, the black dude. You guys all know him. He spent some time in Maryland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, always yeah, chatted yeah, up oh, with yeah. him. Good guy. Last night, in between the show and my podcast, I'm sitting outside. I think I see him walking down the street. <laughs> so, I'm just like, yo, what up, brother? Oh, no. Now the black dude looks at me. This is not the black man I know. <laughs> and he just kind of looks at me and stops and goes, Oh, ass, like, what's up, dude? <laughs> well, at least he played it off. How long did you end up talking to this guy? Oh, you know me, like 30 seconds, a minute, we dapped it up. But, like, as I'm dapping him off in my head, I'm like, oh, I am a terrible person. <laughs> this is the wrong dude. You but just I mean, made a brother's night, though. Yo, like. yeah, I hit him with such, like, an aggressive, like, damn, brother, what's up? And he was like, oh, what's up? I thought I was the only one who confused black people. 
<laughs> you know, he went home and was like, man, I met the coolest white boy. That's what I told him. I, I mean, ran, he, just, he just called me out, man. Oh, I ran boy. inside and told Mike, and I go, this guy's walking home. I'm hoping he's visiting I Seattle. Am, like, they have the friendliest white people <laughs> I've ever met. I have the hardest time with, uh, with faces sometimes and names. I've been working on a name right now for the last four days, and I still can't get it right. You told me what it was once, and I'm and not. Yeah, I, wait, okay. let me write now. Yeah. I, think it is. I think I think this is what you told me. And the problem, our biggest problem, yes. is that it? That's okay. it. I can't remember it. Oh yeah, so I can't remember it. Our for problem whatever reason, that, uh, I just cannot connect the dots. I'm but we head. come up with nicknames for people, and you're not trying to be mean, but the nickname generally reflects your appearance. You know, because if I don't know, what I'm talking about like, hey, uh, so mm, like this, like double L. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then I realized, I don't want to slip up. I'll explain to you who it is in a moment. Yeah. Set, but I'm like, let me go ask Veggie Dog what this person's name is. Because he has a pretty good uh, finger on the pulse of that stuff. And he said, this is their name. And I said, okay, good. So I shouldn't call them. And I said it. And the look he gave me, he's like, I kind of want to laugh. But you might be. <laughs> he actually just piped in. He says, D. Snyder. Yeah. All girl. right. All right. Jesus Christ. What is wrong with him? Tell him to keep his own nicknames for his own people. <laughs> He has to save my life once. Yeah, exactly. We're not going to talk about D. Snyder and he... Yeah, never mind. Yeah. Just... <laughs> uh, <laughs> the worst is when you can't remember a name until you like have to say it out loud. Oh, of course. Yeah. Which means then you remember it. Uh, so a name most people would know is the most interesting man in the world, right? Sure. Well, well, it, well we don't title, know. What yeah. is his name? All right, so you don't know his name. All right, we you know, know he's title. the most interesting man in the world, yeah. All right, so right, we knew the, the original most interesting in the man from Dos uh -huh. Like, he finally retired, and he left, right? And, and then Michael guy, Phelps took over. I, see, I still think that guy looks like Phelps, too, but it's not Phelps. Who, the new guy? Yeah, yeah it's Michael Phelps. You think he, looks he like retired Phelps? as the greatest uh, Olympian of all time, and now he's the most interesting man in the world. No, they just both have, like, weird big mouths. Like, I think no, the there's something about their jawline. That's man. what I mean, there's man. Something... But, like, there, it, there's just something that's not. He looks white, like right, Michael, Michael Phelps, Phelps, dude. And I realize I'm with the guys you. I've been saying it forever. But I don't think he looks like Michael Phelps. I think they just share, honestly, a really ugly mouth. I think I they both that just have an oh, ugly, ugly mouth. Man, it's something more. There's and something after more my last it. story, I don't know if she'd be like, "Yeah, he definitely looks like Michael Phelps." <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Michael Phelps? <laughs> right. so okay, you know what? Yeah, I'm looking at that I mean, picture. Like, there's something about him that looks like an older Michael Phelps. So, all right. I don't know so, what it is. This is what's funny, right? So those, we all know the Dosecki's commercials. Yeah, those are great. But they're not, they're not real life, right? Of course. He's the most interesting man in the world, but we, we understand, we fathom that he's an actor. So Michael Che, you would know is uh, from Weekend Update on Saturday Night Live, uh -huh. also now one of the co-head writers. Oh, so, all right. So he was on with Jimmy Fallon. And he tells a story about performing and running into the world's most interesting man. Right. We went to a Dos Equis party. You know the, the, the beer, Dos Equis or Dos Equis? Dos, dos I say I say Dos Equis. Jimmy's quick to correct that. Dos Equis. When, I know, when I've never heard a word pronounced, I just say it like my grandmother would say it. <laughs> dos Equis. Yeah, Dos Equis. Okay, Dos Equis. But yeah, that's like the most interesting man like that. He was there. And I was photobombing him so much because I was, I was upset. I was photobombing him because people were trying to take pictures with him. And then they came over and asked me to stop. <laughs> and then they asked me, hey, do you want to take a picture? And I was like, sure. So we're taking a picture. And I'm like, I'm going to mess with this guy. And I was like, hey, man, we're going to go to the strip club after this if you want to join. And he said, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, well, maybe, I guess he's making it up. I didn't really believe it. But then, like, 20 minutes later, his guy comes over and is like, hey, Augie wants to go to the shrimp club. <laughs> Augie is his name? I think that's what he said. They had accents. <laughs> <laughs> I think his name is Augie the same way I think the beer is Dos, Dos Equis. Dos Equis, yeah. 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 But, no, we, we, so uh, we went to the strip club. Me and the most interesting man in the world. <laughs> at an Atlanta strip club at 3 in the morning. <laughs> And is he the most interesting man in the world? Dude, he reconnected a father with a son. It was weird. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes on to tell this whole story about just like, basically, by the way, if you want to see the full video, it's up at the mentioned Facebook page. Basically, it sounds like the most interesting man in the world is like that. He, said, he reconnected he, a father and son. Like well, he what? said the way he tells the story is that like there's a father and son in there. They both look kind of awkward. They don't want to like, <clears throat> nobody's really doing anything. And he says that the, the Dosekis guy is just like, I'm going to go over and talk to him. And he's like, like, not like, uh, okay. And then he said, like, 10 minutes later, they're like buying lap dances and they're throwing caps around. Why? That's what he's supposed to do. <laughs> Spread joy. I will say this. Generally, if I'm in a strip club, I'm not excited to see, like, random dudes there. Yeah, generally. But I feel like 
if the world's most interesting man, like for those commercials, walk sure, the store, man, would be like, oh snap, like he's here, the most interesting man in the world. Yeah, and when I do think of strip clubs, you could probably walk in at three a.m. It's Vegas, it's Atlanta, Dallas, yeah. and Atlanta. Maybe yeah, Miami, Tampa, maybe Tampa, or Miami. Yeah. Miami, it's almost hard to know if you're in a strip club just based on the fact that the women there, particularly in South Beach, wear so little clothing. Like, you might just be at a yeah. bar. Like, dude, this is not a strip club. Like, oh, like, Jesus, like, like, my New, bad. Like New York, man. It, I mean, it's got everything. There's everything there, and I know they have strip clubs, but, like, they're not known for like, having the best. Well, no. New York is normally known for having everything great. You know, like, they don't, they don't show up on the radar. Yeah, Dallas is pretty simple. Like, when I flew in there, the cab driver was, like, <laughs> like in no time, was like, here's the free passes, like... These are mine, so if you use them, it'll help me out. And, like, basically he was like, here's barbecue, here's the strip clubs, and here's Tex-Mex. Cool. And hey, that, you, you answered all like, my questions. If yeah. you're going to play concierge and be a taxi cab uh, driver, good for you. Yeah, Because exactly. any suggestion you'll give me, I'll, I'll look it up and take a look at it. But you're right. There's certain towns that definitely have that, that strip club culture and some that don't. <laughs> mm. I was just thinking 3 a.m. Like, no, I'm calling it a night, but yeah, if you're father and son are the in there at 3 a.m., yeah. you know, I guess it's okay. How hard do you have to work to reconnect a father and son if they're already at a strip club at 3 a.m.? Like, you already have a lot of commonalities. Whatever's left, we can work it out. Yeah, and more than likely, they probably had a beverage. Oh, yeah. Like, it, it's 3 a.m. Right? At a strip club. Everybody's just trying to wait out those three and a half hours until yeah. they start serving again at <laughs> six. Yeah. Uh, lately, we've been talking a lot about uh, uh, Tanya Harding. Mm-hmm. And she is back in, the, uh, back in the news with the movie I, Tanya. Not to be confused with iRobot. That was or Italian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know what I was going to say. Michael Che, when he talks about not being able to say Dos Equis, uh-huh. you ever notice people from New York City are kind of like old people from a rural area? Like, they yeah. live in, like, one of the biggest cities in the world, but, like, even they ain't from New York, like, I don't really care. Right. And it's like they don't know stuff. You know what I mean? It's like you don't live out in the, in the cut. Like, you live in New York City, but it's like if it's not New York specific, sometimes they I don't like care. New Yorkers just don't care. At all. It, it's their world. Yeah. It's and back to people not moving. Most of those people would never, and granted, they good reason why. It's a great place to be. Yeah, New York City's a ton of fun. It's a little, little much for me. So, Tanya Harden's been doing the tour. I am not a Piers Morgan fan, all no. right? Uh, a lot of people don't like him, even though he's one of the biggest Arsenal fans in the world. We kind of wish he'd turn in his gear. <laughs> <laughs> so, he has, he's on a show called Great, uh, g- great. <clears throat> Good Morning Britain. Okay. I almost said Great Britain, because that's what they call it. Sure. Good Morning Britain. Uh, Tanya Harding was on there. Basically, I again, I don't like Piers Morgan, but I kind of agree with him here, and Tanya gets kind of worked up and wants to end it. I am really here just to talk about the future and right. what it means. My movie now, to me, is going to help so many people to realize that it is okay to ask for help. It took me so so long to be able to ask yeah, for Tonya, somebody to Tonya, help me. Tonya, let me just interrupt a moment. Do you so think that's that, why I'm here speaking well, to you today? Well, I know that you, maybe it suits you to play the victim, but I think the victim in all this wasn't you. It was Nancy Kerrigan, who had her Olympic dream and shattered we, quite literally I, in her legs. I, I believe mean, that we all... Thank you so much. I appreciate being on your show, but I think I'm going to have to say have a good night. You're, you're going to end the interview because I think that Nancy Kerrigan was the victim here, not you. You weren't letting me finish. I think that many people are the victims of abuse every single day. What does that have to do with anything? He's asking you about Tanya Harding, not every person that's been abused on earth. I mean, let's look at me. If I punch someone in the face, like, I think a lot of people have been punched in the face. I think everyone. I think it's really important that we acknowledge everyone. It's like, we are acknowledging some of them. And in this case, we're acknowledging Nancy Kerrigan because he had her knee bashed in. Right. So that's, And it's not your movie. It's a movie that was made about, about you. you and what you did that was bad to someone else. You didn't write the script. You didn't get the money for the movie. You didn't. You weren't cast in it. You didn't direct it. You didn't write it. You might have been consulted on it. Yeah, I think it's one but of those things though, that, where you just say, "Like, look, man," and, and she can have her position and she can have her opinion, and maybe it's justified, maybe it's not. The only thing I would tell her is, like, listen, 
The only reason people still remember your name, and to be fair, the only reason anyone still remembers Nancy Kerrigan's name is because of this incident that happened 25 years ago. So they just put out a movie, and the movie, if it doesn't have to do with Nancy Kerrigan, not a single person would see it because nobody cares about your life outside of that. That's just how the situation has bared out, right? So if you do an interview, you can't possibly be shocked or claim that you're being blindsided by the interview. You know why you're doing the interview. So if you don't want to talk about this or you're tired of talking about it, the only thing I can say to her is don't do any interviews because the only thing that anyone is ever going to ask you about is that incident. How do you yeah, not I mean, know that? And it's how hard, do you not know that? It's hard to play the victim when it's right, like Nancy Kerrigan, again, got her knee bashed in. <laughs> right. 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 I mean, it's like, it's like it would be like the president. Whatever. There's a book out right now, uh, Fire and Fury. There's the number one in New York Times bestseller. Yeah. Now it's number one. So if I had the Tanya Harding approach, I would say, well, I have the number one book in the country right now. Mm. Well, no, you don't, because it's a book about you. It's a book about you, but it's not the most, it doesn't shed the most positive light, much like this movie where you go and you beat the living crap out of somebody <laughs> to get an Olympic medal. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's like you can't take credit for something where, like, you are the villain. But also, don't be shocked when that's someone asks you about and who the interview. Hell, who the hell's so stupid that makes us come to the point where, like, you would say we defend Piers Morgan? Yeah, exactly, right? Like, I don't like him, but I, I'm 100% on his side this time. Like, Tanya, like, Nancy Kerrigan was the victim here. I mean, and it's an all, interview. And Nancy Kerrigan isn't doing interviews. Yeah. She's not promoting the fact that her leg was broken in and her Olympic dreams were smashed. I don't think she has to either, though. No. Not really. I think she's Nancy not Kerrigan, like, came from money and... And it's always done all right. Like I said, they, they rolled out the red carpet and a silver platter for her when all this went down. She got to host SNL. She's, like I said, she was the, whatever you call it, of whatever the parade was, all this stuff. And I remember her on SNL, and she's just stiff. And look, obviously, she's not a born actress. That's not what she's supposed to do. Right. But she she got all the flowers and the petals and everything else that came with being the victim in that case. And now it's 25 years later. I think we've all moved on, man. Yeah. You know, but they put out the movie, so it rekindles interest. But Tanya Harding, you cannot be so dumb that you don't think they're going to bring it up, specifically when the movie's out. Even if the mm -hmm. movie wasn't out, guess what they're going to talk to you about anyway? Yeah. Either that or the sex tape. Yeah, exactly. And to Those be fair, that's two things that I know are great. <laughs> I, I mean, then, man. yeah, then. Uh, so, American Idol. Did you guys ever watch Idol when it was on? No. All right, thrill. Never watched Idol. No, no. So one of the best parts, if you watched Idol, to me, was in the first few episodes they would show all the bad auditions. Oh okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I would watch that, that stuff. But isn't sure. that how uh, William Hung came to be and all that stuff? Hmm. Sounds like you watch Idol. Well, no, but I remember that because those were the things you saw. You saw the outtakes of all these people coming out, and like that's how they promoted the show. So when you saw a commercial for American Idol, it's like people going around. William going, Hung was the guy. Yeah. Like, oh, William Hung, he was probably the most famous. But now ABC owns American Idol. They're bringing it back, and they say they're doing away basically with uh, all those bad performances. Uh, somebody said, "Quote: It doesn't feel comfortable to put borderline unstable people up on stage and laugh at them." <laughs> I, Robin disagrees. You signed well, up. Thing. William Hung went to Stanford. Like, it's not like he was, like, insane. He was just a really bad singer. Right. And some people, like, I'm a really bad singer. It doesn't make me a crazy person. So I, if I went to American Idol and tried, like, take advantage you're of it. You're only cool and hip if you can sing. And if not, you're you're mentally unstable. Well, the other thing, so she too, says, is... Here's her other quote. She says, they want the humor, but they don't want the exploitation. But I, I don't know. I, to me, that never felt that no. exploitatious. No. Well, you got to think about why why people are there in the first place. The dumb you guy know, on the game people. show doesn't win. But the thing is, you go to American Idol, it's, it's your choice to try to pursue this type of career, and maybe you think you have a fighting chance, but you're you're there because the career that you think you want would involve an S ton of public scrutiny. Oh yeah. So it's kind of hard to say that you feel bad for someone who, in the first place, is making it clear that this is what they would like to do. And look. You could be the best singer in the world and you get mocked. Adele comes out, does whatever she does, people make fun of her way, right? Doesn't matter. She could sing the goddamn paint off a wall if she wanted to. It's like you're not gonna win. It doesn't matter. You're gonna get scrutinized, but but it's hard like it's hard to exploit someone whose goal is to be exploited. I, I'm with you. And I think some of them know they're going to the audition and they're sure. gonna be bad. Absolutely. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like and they want their be, fifteen minutes. Right. It might be funny, but you know you're gonna be on the outtakes. You're gonna yeah, be on that, the outtakes. I just it seems weird because like People like us who don't really watch the show, that to me was always the episodes I yeah. would tune into. I I'll bet be, you they're uh, going to find some of their viewership goes down based would, on that. That's because, exactly right, what I was going to say. The begin, would, like, you might get my ass to watch the first few episodes, and you're absolutely right, just because of the sheer 
volume of people that are absolutely terrible and just the judge's reaction to how uncomfortable it is. But that was it. But once they broke it, I don't know, 16, 20, however many, once you've got good people, I was gone. Yeah. yeah. Not only that, but if you like restaurant closes you've been to for 20 years, you've gone there all the time and for whatever reason, they shut down for a couple of years because somebody died, whatever the deal is. And you're like, well, that sucks. And, and two years later, one of the family members says, I'm going to come back in here and uh, redo the thing. Well, like, thank God, you know, Mama's restaurant opened up back. If they don't have the meatloaf that they used to have, it's not the same. So, like, I'm, I'm curious to see how they do just based on the fact that they were very successful when they're on Fox. And if... Okay. Jesus, God, man, that's a tight... It had to be tight, man. That is a tight area you have. Either that or I'm going to poop my pants. It's like, it's like a double knot of balloon. <laughs> yeah, I think they're just banking on people still, the 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 bulk of the crowd still loving them. Yeah. Uh, real quick, by the way, kind of funny uh, ratings from last week. The NFL wild card game with the Falcons and the Rams, Yeah, that was number one. But that was none a of terrible those, game. None of those other playoff games made it in there. I think it really? helps that it was on uh, on Saturday night. And I always bring up NCIS and then the Big Bang Theory. But you know what came in fourth at, uh, last week? Hmm. Young Sheldon. Really? Young Sheldon. I've never seen the show, but I guess they don't need my help. Well, Sheldon is one of the main characters on no, Big Bang I Theory. I understand oh, yeah. what it is. I'm uh, saying I haven't oh, watched yeah. the show. I get what you're doing there. Yeah. I saw what you did. <laughs> Thank you, Ted. There we go. TV time with Ted. We've got your headlines coming up, and I still can't remember. With Mike Hawk, you are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. <laughs> the Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. All right, here we go. Texas woman who did over a million dollars damage to an art collection could get life in jail. Meanwhile, a singer says that smoking and eating meat should be illegal, and we're all going straight to hell. Good news is last year's uh, last year breaks record for the most organs donated, saving lives. A dad finds something on his son's phone that makes him break out in hives, and U.S. immigration does a massive sweep on 7-Eleven. It is time for your headlines. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my car. All right, our top story. We go to New York, where a recently rehabilitated man on parole has been arrested for holding up a subway at knife point. But it wasn't difficult for police officers to track him down mainly because he was still wearing his ankle bracelet when he robbed the subway, so police could track his location throughout the entire incident. It just makes me angry, Mike. Why is that? I mean, look, there are people that have a proclivity to commit whatever crimes that we have out there. Mm -hmm. I understand that. I accept it. There's just a percentage of the population that'll do it. But it doesn't mean you have to be an idiot. Because at that point, you're just embarrassing to the human race, right? Yeah. Like as a human, dude, you got the ankle monitor on. At least if you're going to commit a crime, like try to get away with it. Isn't that kind of the thing, though? There's just idiots in every industry. I know. There's I people know. that yeah, just shouldn't you're right, be in you're that right. industry. <laughs> so, right, there's a percentage of people that will commit crime, and then for them as well, just like the rest of us, there's a percentage of idiots that work within your industry. Right. I thought it was kind of understood, too. You don't rob, like, fast food joints. Why? Really? What's the, Why? Uh, I don't know. It just it doesn't seem like you see that many, like, fast food places getting robbed. Like, well, I don't know. I don't think there's a ton of money. There's not a ton of money to be made. And also, in my experience with fast food places... That's one of the places where I think the employees are most likely to fight back. Really? Oh, yeah. Bunch yeah, of yeah. teenagers making minimum wage, they're going to fight back? They don't uh, care. That That's right look, here. When I was 16, I, I did not fear death because in my mind, like, nothing bothered you, nothing hurt you. You recovered from everything, and you would throw down with anybody. Boy, not me, man. I was a coward. You oh. son of a bitch. Guy could have come up to me with a paper clip, said empty the register, and I'd have given him both registers... <laughs> Well, that's what you should. Give me all your chlorine, lifeguard. <laughs> and I worked at Jack in the Box, too. Didn't get fired from that one because I was a good employee. I got fired from Burger King because I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and you went to BKU and everything. And I don't go there anymore. I go to McDonald's. So guess what, buddy? I got a lifetime of fast food money that didn't go to you. <laughs> Suck it. <laughs> I worked bars and restaurants. I never worked in a fast food joint. Mm -hmm. All right, around the world, Alicia Dixon, a British singer and Britain's Got Talent judge, has come forward and declared a few things that she would make illegal if she had the power over the law. Mainly what she wants to make illegal are smoking and eating meat. She said she would also close down every factory responsible for both meat and smoking production. Oh, good for her. This is why people are angry with vegans. Well, it's fine. I mean, I get it. We've all got an opinion. But the question would be, you know, that's great. Now you're in charge. This is the decision you made. What do you do to get those people jobs? Yeah, no, and like then that, the farmers like, that farm look, the tobacco look, and all that go. So, how do you look? If you can cover for all of the other things that go down when you make one dumb decision, like you don't have to like everything, th but understand how things work, and you tend to make. 
that's when you compromise is when you can actually understand the other side. Yeah. You don't have and to agree, it. but just understand. And you're not and you're not the know it all. So don't tell right. me how to live my life. Right. I'm knocking on your door telling you how to be religious. I mean, if that's the case, can I get rid of all pop music? Sure. Because there's no sincerity in it, and obviously you don't care, and you're not and trying. It's garbage, and trash, right. and like, it sucks, on. and you're just eating people's money. So why not get rid of that? And too? it's corrupting the children of no, countries it's everywhere. You're and damn it's right. Dance, dance like it's the last night in our life, Mike. Right. And grind up on people and you know have premarital sex. Sure. Sweaty people Maybe having sex. Drugs and crave money, all that stuff. <clears throat> Moving on. A Texas woman is in a legal battle with a man that she went on a date with after she allegedly got drunk and belligerent and did some damage to some precious items. Oh, she went on a rampage. That's what I was actually saying. Well, on a rampage, the woman shattered a, uh, two $20,000 sculptures and even poured wine on a few paintings, including a couple of Andy Warhol paintings worth about half a million dollars apiece. I don't know much about the story, but please give me 100 bucks if her name is Shauna. Uh, Lindy. Mm. Not a bad guess, though, Lindy dude. Not Lou a bad Lay guess. Man. I was going to show her. I mean, if it were family food, you at least dinged into number three. Yeah, she looks know. exactly like you think she looks like. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Paint, paint a picture for what me, guys. What is like? this, Don Art? Yeah, I'm going yeah, like, to try I, at your house if you don't want to kick me out. You ready for this, Miles? Lindy Lou Layman. Lindy Lou Layman. Lindy Lou. Hey there, Lindy Lou. If you got two first names like that, not not first and last, but if you have two <laughs> names that are your first name, normally you're trouble. Mm-hmm. Hey, by the way, Mike, a comment just came in. We're Uh-oh. talking about don't rob fast food places. Yeah. It says, hey, man, your theory's right. My friend from high school robbed a Little Caesars. He ended up getting shot. Ooh. Nice. Yeah, Keep Little mind, Caesars is packing? <laughs> you might be making minimum wage, but that also plays a lot into your anger. Wasn't that the same People thing? People like- that don't make a lot of money and 90% of your customer base is a bunch of jackasses, like, you're in a real bad you, effing uh, mood, uh, Specific man. with fast food. Did you see, like, corner stores... Bodegas, gas stations, they get knocked over all the time. Okay, sure. Did that happen to a Taco Bell in, in like Texas where it was getting held up and the guy pulled a gun? Yeah, the guy behind the back car pulled out a gun to pull away. Back to Little Caesars. Ted, you know this. Uh, Steve, you love the deep, deep, uh, deep dish pizza. It was their like Detroit style, whatever it was. Right, it was right. good, man. Have yeah. you guys had the DiGiorno take home variety yet? I have no. Oh my God. Oh my God, go get that. It <laughs> is so good. It's like, it's like Little Caesars pizza, but at home. Okay. Right. You, don't have, you don't have to spend the six bucks and go pick it up. I have to spend all six dollars. Right. I'm, I'm just saving you some money. You can spend nine and pick it yourself. In fact, if you check the dumpster <laughs> out behind the store, there's a bunch of little DiGiorno boxes ripped up. Dude, out the it is good. Try it. I do like a deep dish pizza. It's a big, uh, it's a big rectangle. You'll like it. I actually used to get those deep dish pizzas from Costco. It's those little teeny tiny ones. Hell oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard oh, the regular man. one's pretty good. Yeah, all right. We're on the highway. We're on the pizza highway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get back into it here. In Missouri, a father made the tough but right call when it came to his son's activities. It's kind of a dark story. The man confiscated his son's cell, cell phone as a punishment and decided to go through it. While scanning his photos, he found inappropriate pictures of his, the father's, two-year-old Ooh. girlfriend's two-year-old son sleeping on his phone. When Ooh. confronted about it, the photos, the son, uh, uh, the photos, uh, the son admitted to having them with the plan of selling them for cash. Jesus, he was driven by his father and now faces child pornography charges. He's lucky his dad didn't beat his ass, right? I mean, seriously, beat his ass. Because if you're going to go that far to turn you into police, like, I am this close to beating your ass. Right. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to spare your life and I'm going to call the cops. I think my son would be calling the cops. That's yeah. it for your My father's trying to kill me. With that, my hawk is out. <laughs> Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time for Big Dummy, the head chef in the house, Ted's Meat, Potatoes, No Ass, Sherlock, and of course, another round of Profile This. Yes, indeed. It is all true. So put on your thinking caps and get in your thinking chairs. Until tomorrow, please do what you do best. And for Aletha's sake, stay beautiful. Stay beautiful.